Had to bring that big book, didn't you? Good morning. Welcome to the Tulare County Planning Commission May 11th meeting. Um, roll call, please. Gong? Here. Millies? Here. Elliot? Here. Diaz? Here. Whitlatch? Yes. Miliano? Yes. Aguilar? Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested persons have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited at the discretion of the Chair. In order to be considered by the Planning Commission, testimony on public hearing items must be given at the time scheduled for the public hearing. At all times, please use the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Uh, do we have a motion for the approval of the minutes of April? Madam Chair, you've opened for public comment. May I speak? Over there. On any non-agenda items. Good morning, Richard Harriman, representing the Dinuba Citizens for Responsible Planning and Roger Wasdatsky. We're on your agenda this morning for item number six, and I understand that I'm not to present testimony on that at this time, but I would ask through the chair the procedural question because it's my understanding that the public hearing was closed on this matter before and will not be allowed to appear. So if we're not gonna be allowed to appear, I simply wanted to make a comment that we are very concerned that this matter should probably go to peer review based on the fact, similar to your uh, sand and gravel mining operations, that the applicant has applied for the entitlements pursuant to our settlement agreement. The county staff has done the lion's share of the work being paid by the applicant. There's been no evidence in the record that the applicant has a consultant representing them. And so we think when you look at the body of the material that you have there, if you've read it all, and God help you if you have, that we really would be well advised to have this subject to peer review, and that would be the comment I would make in case we can't comment at that time. Anything else? Thank you. I just wanted to make the comment that um, I would recommend that we do allow public testimony for item number six, but only on um, if you have new things to say and and a strict three-minute time limit. And that would be at the time that we... At the time that we address item six, yes. Sir, if you have some new information on this, um, when we can bring the continued matter up, the Richard Best Transfer Incorporated, then you would be able to give your testimony. Yeah, I'm just not commenting on contribution to that specifically, except that uh, I have received a large number of documents, 914 pages, and uh, I received some of them 16 days ago, and some of them 12 days ago. And for all that quantity of information, I need more time to analyze them and make comment. So I'm just requesting that we be given more time to make comment after reviewing these documents. Thank you very so much. So if they want to consider that on the program later, that can be factored in then. Thank you very much okay? for your comment. Thank you. Okay, we will go back to approval of the minutes of April 27th. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion we approve that minute. I'll second the motion. The vote, please. Gong? Yes. 
Millis? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Yes. Juliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. On parcel map public hearings, action on all parcel maps in this section of the agenda will be heard in one public hearing. Unless anyone wishing to discuss any one of these items requests that it be pulled for a separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any item unless requested. In any case, there will be a se separate vote on each item. Do we have any comment? As uh, to the chair, as a point of clarification on item 4B, uh, we'd like to change the first name of Mary to Martha. That it completes the point of clarification. Thank you. No other? Okay. Then we'll begin with 4A, tentative parcel map number PPM 16-001. Jean S. Jones, co-trustee, and Sarah K. Hart, co-trustee, Forrester, Weber, and Associates. This is for a categorical, I'll never say that, categorical exemption and tentative parcel map number PPM 16-001 to divide one 39.18 acre parcel, section 40, into two parcels. Parcel one will be 1.89 acres and parcel two, 37.29 acres in the AE40 exclusive agriculture 40 acre minimum zone. The site is located on the south side of Avenue 320, approximately 1,250 feet east of Road 138 north of Isaiah. And the contact is Francis Torado. Uh, there's no <coughs> presentation, so. Okay. No public. Comments for any of these items? That was done earlier. Yes. It opened up. Yes. So it's to us here at this point. Does anybody Ready? have? If there's no comments, I'll make a motion. May I? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I, I'd, I'd move to uh, approve a categorical exemption consistent with CEQA pertaining to minor land divisions in urbanized areas. Approve the exemption pertaining to the waiver of a final map. Uh, with an urban area boundary and conditionally approved tentative parcel map PPM 16-001 and waiver of the final map. I'll second that. Thank you. Can we have the vote? Long? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Yes. Miliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. Item 4B is tentative parcel map number PPM 16-003, Martha Jane Hall with Neil Zerling Land Surveyor Incorporated. This is a categorical exemption and tentative parcel map number PPM 16-003 to divide one 19.40 acre parcel sectional 20 yes, into two parcels, parcel one 1.45 acres and parcel 2 17.93 acres in the AE 20 exclusive agriculture 20 acre minimum zone the site is located on the north side of Avenue 400 State Highway 201 east side of Road 68 south of Dinuba and the contact again is Francis Dorado which we do not have a presentation do we have a motion or any comments from the commission? I'll, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, Cal Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures and conditionally approved tentative parcel map number PPM. 16-003 and waiver of the final map. I'll second. May we have the vote? Gong? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Juliana? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. Number 5A is a special use permit number PSP 16-001. Fresno MSA LP doing business as Verizon Wireless, Ryan Beaumont, Cariff SAC Wireless. 
This is a categorical exemption and special use permit number PSP 16-001 to allow a new telecommunications facility with a 125 foot high self-supporting tower on a 2,500 square foot portion of an 18.97 acre parcel in the AE20 exclusive agriculture 40 acre minimum zone. The site is located on the northeast corner of Avenue 50 and Road 40 near Alpa, and our contact is April Hill. Good morning, Chairman Tigliano and uh, the commissioners. I'm April Hill, Planner 3 in County's Planning and Project, Project Processing Division. The subject site is southeast of the Alpa urban development boundary and about four miles west of, of uh, State Highway 43. Regarding the general plan, the subject site is subject to the World Valley Lands Plan, which designates it for valley agriculture. The proposed project will not conflict with commercial ag, and the property owner is required to sign a right to farm notice. The project is consistent with relevant policies of the general plan. Subject sites in the AE40 zone and the Tulare County Zoning Ordinance allows radio microwave television towers uh, Towers over 75 are required to have an approved special use permit, consistent with the proposed with the zoning regulations. Here's an aerial of the property showing agriculture and scattered rural residences. The nearest off-site residence is about 100 feet west of the tower, and the noise generated will be of a minimal effect. The facility site is cur currently contains row crops and otherwise is undeveloped. The California Natural Diversity Database shows no species of concern in the area. An Alpa irrigation district runs along the eastern boundary about 500 feet distant, and railroad tracks run along the north. And it's not in an ag preserve. Here's some photo simulations of the proposed 125 foot tall self supporting lattice tower and the telecommunications equipment. There's one cell tower existing within five miles of the site, and options for co-location are limited. Here's the first page of the site plan, which will be within a 50 by 50 foot lease area. It'll be about 59 feet to the edge of Road 40, McNeely Road, and about 120 feet south of a dirt road by the railroad tracks. Road 40 has a 12 foot wide pavement and is a minor road. Not much traffic, not a collectoral or arterial road. The tower will be engineered and has a very stable lattice structure. The facility will also have 12 panel antennas, a GPS antenna, standby generator with a diesel tank, uh, two, two microwave antennas, electrical equipment and cables, surrounded by a, an eight foot tall chain link fence topped with barbed wire. The applicant proposes a 12 foot wide access and utility easement. Wireless communication, telecommunications facility will comply with regulations and standards of the Federal Aviation uh, Administration, the Federal Communications Commission, and the American National Standards Institute. The applicant does not plan to place a temporary facility before the permanent tower and equipment are installed, and the draft resolution will be revised to delete description of the temporary equipment, which was on page two, and a related condition of approval, which is number 31 at the very end. A public notice for the project was mailed to surrounding property owners and published in the Faisalia Times Delta with a 10-day comment period. We had um, no comments received. And this ends staff's report. The agent, Mr. Beaumont from SAC Wireless, is available to answer any questions if you have them. Um, I was wondering, do we, I didn't notice it in the, um, the material you gave us on the project, but do we have an aesthetic component on this one? No, it's a categorically exempt, and in the notice of exemption, we talk about how the structures are comparable to other structures in the ag land surrounding. I, I mean, we've done that in so many others. I'm just wondering why we're not doing that in this one. Uh, 
Chairman, if, if I may. Um, the, the location of this one, it would draw more attention if it was a giant tree yeah. than it does as just the utility thing. That's why in this case we, we weren't recommending to camouflage it, so to speak. So what? So that's because of the, uh, the landscape in Alpa is, is what? Is there anything planted around there? Here's the photo simulation of existing and um, proposed. And here's a, another view of it. I kind of prefer to get away from that metal look. You know, John, it kind of fits in there probably a little better because just, what, about a, less than a, a mile or two to the west, uh, east is the big high tension line that goes through there. Oh. And the towers look just like that. Is that, uh, is that about right, Mike? I, I'll, I'll defer to April because I haven't. But you're right, the, the, the PG&E uh, grid line goes right, right near right. there. Mm -hmm. You have trees out there though, right? On the neighboring property, on the residence across the street. Oh. I will just add in, but that would look like a giant redwood <laughs> out in the middle of the field <laughs> instead of a tree. 125 feet, it would. It did. Oh. See. That's all field crops around there, right? Yeah. What about an American flag? <clears throat> I don't know. I just, I just think we, you know, we've established a, a, a precedent in other places, and we're, we shouldn't give one a, a pass just because somehow it's going to stand out. It's still going to look better in wire. But, you know, I'll, I'll entertain other <laughs> ideas. On it. it doesn't make sense to me if we're doing it on other. <coughs> comments or any other comments by the commission before I open the public hearing okay I will now open the public hearing um, are there any <coughs> comments by the applicant or anyone else that would like to step up now and make comments okay thank you I will now close the public hearing and do I have a vote? We'll make a motion. We we'll make a motion that we cat, uh, approve categorical exemption consistent with CEQA and state CEQA guidelines for Title 14, uh, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to construction and location of a limited number of new and small structures and conditionally approved special use permit PSP 16-001. May we? I'll second, I'll second the motion. Thank you. May we have the vote? Gong? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? No. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Emiliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> that was the moment we've been all waiting for. Item number six, which is a continued <coughs> matter, the final site plan number PSR 14-005, Richard Best <coughs> Transfer Incorporated, Wyatt E. Best. This is a final site plan, PSR 14-005, for Richard Best Transfer Incorporated, RBT, with an addendum <coughs> to a previously adopted negative declaration to allow improvements, the construction of a hard car unloader and commodities barn to increase efficiencies at an existing <coughs> freight forwarding facility. The project includes a master plan, site, uh, master site plan for the Port of Ivory, LLC, POI, an updated RBT operational statement and a landscape plan, which were required as terms of the 2012 settlement agreement between POI, RBT, and Dinuba citizens for responsible planning. Located in the M2 SR Heavy Manufacturing Site Review Combining Zone at 6801 Avenue 430, Reedley, California, on the south side of Avenue 430 between Road 68 and Road 72, approximately 1,000 feet west of the Dinuba City limits. The matter was continued from September 23rd. 2015, October 14th, 2015, and November 18th, 2015.
January 27th, 2016, February 24th, 2016, and April 13th, 2016. Our contact would be Aaron Brock. And would you like to give the presentation? Yes, Chairperson Patigliano, Commissioners. I am Aaron Bach, Chief Planner with Tulare County RMA. And before you today, as stated, is the master site plans for the Port of Ivy Industrial Park and Richard Best Transfer Incorporated. Uh, through the 2012 settlement agreement, uh, by way of background, the RBT facility has been operating on the site since 2001. The 2012 settlement agreement was in response to noise and dust complaints by the DCRP and Richard Harriman. The agreement required a master site plan with the noise study and the traffic study, which have been completed and are part of the addendum to the ISND. Furthermore, on the settlement agreement, the other requirements were construction of a commodities building, installation of a hard car and loader, and a landscaping plan, which have been presented to this planning commission. As a result of discussions with all parties, RBT plans to develop the site to provide better efficiencies for receiving and releasing rail cars to the San Joaquin Valley Railroad by adding rail spurs that, first of all, allow the longer trains to unload on tracks that are off the main line and to group emptied rail cars on one track so that the SJVR may remove them more easily. And that is a result of the latest discussions with the applicant and opposition. In regards to the meetings between the parties, originally on October 9th, 2015, in the first meeting, there was uh, produced an addendum to the settlement agreement. On October 29th, 2015, Joseph Evans, general man manager of the SJVR, uh, came and discussed these issues. Uh, since then, there has been two other meetings with all parties, and as recently as March 30th, 2016, to try to settle any remaining issues. Since then, the Mr. Harriman has filed a lawsuit against the applicant for breach of the settlement agreement. For the record, uh, the final POI master site plan, the RBT operational statement, and the landscaping plan were all mailed to the planning commissioners and all parties on April 22nd, 2016. The resource management agency has made findings and responded to the comments, all comments received during this process. The comments, response to comments, and attachments were mailed to the Planning Commission and all parties on April 26, 2015, in order to allow all parties adequate time to evaluate the material. These documents are incorporated by reference to the attached resolution and are available online at the following two locations. So we had, we're discussing two site plans here, one for the overall Port of Ivory and one for RBT. The one for the overall Port of Ivory is merely part of the settlement agreement and in fulfillment of the settlement agreement. So that includes, as you can see before you, the Port of Ivory headquarters, Maramonte, Green's Best, ALW, Mission Agriculture, and the RBT site plan. That is the overall site plan we are looking for. Uh, <clears throat> to discuss today. So, as to be distinguished from the RBT site plan, which, as we discussed before, phase one of this master site plan includes construction of a rail car site, rail siding spur, excavation of a receiving pit, installation of electric powered NPK hard car and loader, and an electric powered drag conveyor, all part of the settlement agreement. And in addition to that, there's the uh, phase two of the master site plan, which is further down the road. Uh, it's construction of a free span commodities barn with a bucket elevator, addition of approximately 1,000 feet of track by the unloader in the barn to store 15 additional cars and facilitate faster unit train spot and pull times, hence efficiencies. <clears throat> Uh, at some time in the future, the applicant plans to enclose the barn, install solar panels on the roof, and install a bag house to capture dust. The solar panels will power the electric hard car unloader and conveyor equipment, none of which can go forward unless this site plan is approved. So with that, I have the following two recommended motions. Uh, the first motion is to approve the master site plan for the Port of Ivory and fulfillment of the settlement agreement. 
And two is the motion to approve the addendum to the adopted negative declaration for zone change number PZ07-010 and to conditionally approve the final site plan number PSR14-005 to increase efficiencies to an existing freight forwarding terminal and a master site plan for the Richard Best transfer subject to modifications as discussed. Uh, I did want to point out there are quite a few conditions of approval that have been added. There are limitations as we discussed to this project and all of that is presented in all the packages that we have given more than normal times to review and uh, we have in the process answered all the planning commissioners questions and with that I'll turn it back over to the planning commission. Yes, uh, thank you Mr. Bach. As a point of uh, <coughs> I'm sure these were mailed on April 26, 2016, not 2016. 2016, sir. Thank you. As a point of correction. Okay. Um, uh, Madam oh, Chair. Uh, if, yes. Yes, I may. Um, I would recommend, planning staff is recommending, that you would allow the, uh, the applicant and the opposition to make uh, – a brief statements regarding any new information that they might have and maybe time time limit that to maybe three minutes uh, for, for new information and then I would uh, I'd like to reserve uh, a moment to have a, a brief summary before your uh, Commission considers the matter so am I opening the public hearing in order to do that yes. okay thank you okay I have a question for uh, the attorney brought up the peer review process. Can you explain that? Well, um, under some circumstances, under SMARA, we have allowed uh, peer review, mostly through uh, some pressure from opposition to do it. It's not a, a matter of course, so to say. We've brought SMARA projects before you that have not had peer review. On the other hand, um, in situations we have done uh, peer review, um, to be distinguished by the fact that the work was done by uh, outside consultants in the first place to peer review. Uh, in this case, the work that staff has done has been in response mostly to comments uh, and trying to make clarifications to the planning commission. Uh, the operational statement is really in response to what opposition wanted to see and so that's that's why that is before you. Um, also, opposition has had their consultant look at it as well, uh, as far as peer review, uh, if we accept their professional engineering opinion as a, a peer review of it. Um, all that's documented in the record. Uh, I don't believe a, a peer review would be necessary at this time. Again, it's not uh, typical practice uh, for for us, but uh, that's all within the Planning Commission's purview. And how would a peer review be different than what we have received so far? Well, again, this would be a, <coughs> a, a, a first time for us if we were to have a peer review on uh, any of staff's work. Um, Public Works does projects all the time without peer review. Uh, so um, it, it, a case of first impression, uh, we, we'd have to figure that out if we were to do something like that. I, I don't know what that would look like. Our operational statement as we sit here today is, and this Planning Commission has seen quite a few operational statements and site plans before, uh, we, we just tried to, again, clarify what's going on on this site and uh, make sure that everything is, is adequate so you could review it properly. So uh, it's probably one of the better operational statements that has been produced here. Um, so to, to peer review this would be, it would be interesting. I, I don't know what that would look like, but it would be hi hiring outside consultants basically to, to look at that and uh, comment on it. Aaron, but, um, what do you think about, I, I'm inclined to agree with you on the peer review, but what do you think about the request? And we've really considered the neighbors in this and we've had them involved in the settlement all along. You think uh, 
like a two week extension and something would be warranted? <coughs> well, the, uh, and I'll, I'll leave this to the, the sidebar over here I, as well. <clears throat> I would not at this point. I think at this time, um, I think the, the, the work that staff has put into this is sufficient for what the project is, the project being a hard car unloader and a commodity barn. Uh, so I, I feel that at this point, there's been enough time dedicated, enough resources dedicated, that, this, that, that the commission has sufficient information in front of them to make an informed and, and uh, decision on the matter. I would recommend that that the chair open up the public uh, uh, hearing to allow final comments from each side, and then that I'll make a summary statement and, and then have the Planning Commission consider the matter. I, I think that um, at this point in time that there's sufficient evidence in the record that you can make an informed decision. I agree with the staff's comments about discouraging peer review. Uh, we're gonna get into an analysis paralysis mode here if we're not careful. So uh, I think we need to make uh, a decision, move, make a motion on this and move forward. I, I agree with Wayne and I think no matter what decision we make, it's gonna go to the next level. So, and we have enough information. This thing's been talked to death, but uh, I'm willing to listen to any new testimony also. My mind is not closed. Okay, if, uh, if that's per the Commission's uh, discretion. I will open the public hearing now for final site plan number PSR 14 005. If anyone would like to make comments, we welcome you. Good morning, Mike Slater on behalf of RBT. My address is 7522 North Colonial Avenue in Fresno. I'm their legal representation. We have nothing new to add at this time. Uh, we appreciate staff's time and all the hard work and you can see they put a lot of time and effort into this. I would like the opportunity to respond if the opposition presents new uh, testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Good morning, honorable chair, members of the commission, Richard Harriman. I'll be very brief because my time is short. Number one, on the breach of contract suit that we filed, we filed that in order to make sure that we didn't miss the statute of limitations, which is a three-year statute of limitations. It has not been served on the opposing party. It is being held during pending the negotiations. One of the allegations is the failure to do the landscaping pursuant to the first agreement. Other allegations include different issues that aren't relevant for today. Second thing is the reason that I raised this, and I think planning staff and I even though we work well together personally, we can agree to disagree professionally. I have, this is a project of first impression in my experience where an applicant, and there is a formal applicant, it's not the county, but the way it's appeared, it is as though the county is moving the project forward for the applicant and serving as the applicant's consultant. They are being paid by the applicant. The applicant has no other planning consultant or engineer that's been working with the county. Mr. Slater is a superb attorney. He does a great job as an attorney. But your job in the public interest and the public trust is to protect the public's interest in seeing that the provisions of your code and the site plan review process and the other processes are fulfilled in a fair and unbalanced way. And we really think in this situation where there's a conflict of interest here, because of the way that this has been prosecuted. All of the materials you have there have largely been done by staff. And so staff is having to present to you in a staff report why they think you should go ahead and approve the project. They're going to be here to defend that recommendation and yet the whole time they've been working for the applicant. We have in introduced our objections but we have, uh, we have a, a position, we have an interest in this. We're opposed to the project as it's currently constructed. Final point, or, or currently proposed. We got all of this stuff starting in August. We finally got all of it about two weeks ago. And you got the same amount. And I challenge each of you to ask yourselves in your heart and in your in integrity, have you read all of the documentation that's been provided to you? How do you, do, how do you make a judgment? You're gonna do it on the staff report. So we really need to have a third party come in here who is not biased, who is not paid by us, who is paid through the county by the applicant 
to have an objective third party argument because we think this one is biased. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. Any, okay. Any other comments? Hi, uh, my name is John Ennis. Uh, business address is 735 West Olivia Fresno. Uh, I am the consulting engineer to Mr. Wazdotsky. Uh, I'm trying to play middle ground here a little bit because I try to stay even keel with uh, understanding the needs of staff, the needs of business, as well as the, the issues faced by Mr. Wazdowski. What I'm having difficulty with is there's a lawsuit settlement here that there is the intent to apply a standard of care for a master site plan, master site plan review. And what I think was being expected was to follow section 16.2 county requirements of site plan review and I'm going to just read briefly the purpose of this section is to enable the county to make a finding that proposed development is in conformity with the provisions of this ordinance and the goals and objectives of the general plan site plan review process is further intended to provide a means whereby the planning department public works building department public health fire wardens office may establish consistent uniform requirements of development projects and as I go through the, the master site plan, for me, there's some uh, elements that are missing that perhaps the intent of the lawsuit settlement was to make a more formal site plan review go. I made comments to that, and the response back was, well, we can't re you know, really apply those standards of care uh, because it's an existing condition. It goes all the way back to the 40s, so therefore we don't need to have a master drainage plan, and we don't need to know where the fire hydrants are and things of that nature. And so... That's where the, I think the rub is here a little bit, it's the understanding as to what was intended perhaps and what's being delivered are two entirely different things. And so that's what I really wanted to uh, offer today and, and let you know that's what you're approving is what's not a, a full site plan review. It's, it's an existing condition and we're only doing the addenda and uh, the fire marshal really doesn't have a comment at this time, things like that. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention before approval today. So thank you. Thank you. May I briefly respond? Yes. I'd like to respond to Mr. Herman's comments regarding uh, peer review and the use of uh, staff uh, as a consultant. I think I'm kind of surprised by Mr. Herman's comments because I think he'd have the same comments if we went out and independently hired consultants and worked with them directly. In most cities, staff doesn't have the time or the ability to work with the applicant on such things. I don't think that this is an uncommon situation that staff has worked with us and Mr. Herman's objections would be the same if we went out and hired a third party consultant and worked directly with them. Additionally, you know, they've complained about the amount of material that was provided two weeks ago. Well, I would say 90 or 95 percent of this is all uh, uh, old stuff that the opposition's had an opportunity to review for years. It's mostly just a compilation of the record, and the only new uh, material is the updated uh, site plan and the conditions, as, as far as I can tell. So um, it's not like you got 950 pages of new material. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> and again, I'll just remind you, please... State, uh, uh, sorry, state your name and address. Yeah, I'm uh, Roger Wazdowski, and I live over there near the site, and I want to point out that... Uh, Excuse me, can you give your address? Uh, 42481 Road 72. It's a few hundred feet away to the south uh, west of the site. Thank you. And uh, I maybe didn't identify at the earlier statement today, but it was probably obvious I was talking concerning PSR 14005 and admit it is there's a lot of progress been made and all these papers it's really appreciated all the work that everybody's doing on the situation and it's coming down more to the conclusion of the situation hopefully pretty soon that I'm willing to spend more time if it's done proper and to the benefit of the community. Now the main deficiency of this uh, whole thing at the point we're at now is the uh, blocking of Road Avenue 424 and like as many as 50 horn blasts 
for one visit is not being really addressed that much. We appreciate getting rid of the noise from the hammering and the thumper machine. We don't really know what's going to happen with the uh, hardcore unloader, how much noise that's going to make. It's kind of like speculative right now. But we'll have to see what happens. But uh, we know that uh, the Federal Railroad Administration and the San Joaquin Valley Railroad, they give very low priority to worrying about blocking the road and blowing their horns over there. So it's my analysis that it's up to the, uh, it's kind of like the obligation of uh, whoever is working with the county and the planning commission to implement a program where I think that the uh, project owners do have enough financial means and so forth and capability to alter their train circulation on the site so that they quit going back and forth across 424 like they've been doing. And the way it's going to end up now, it looks like that aspect of it is going to continue pending how much pressure they might feel to do that alteration. So that pretty well concludes what I had to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Richard Harriman, Mr. Wasdatsky misstated the location of his property. It's to the southeast of the project, and I just wanted to correct the record to that effect. Yeah, Thank that you. is correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other comments at this time? And now would you like to? Thank, thank you. Um, I would just like to state that uh, we appreciate all the effort all the parties have put in. There's been this very been uh, much time and resources dedicated to, to working this project. Uh, again, this was a result of a settlement agreement. Uh, the, the, the issues at hand, the project per se, is uh, and what triggers the requirement on the county side, because we're not a party to the settlement agreement. This is the, what, what triggers the project, the final site plan for, the, for, for your consideration, is the, re the requirement that you have to have a final site plan for the building permits. The building permits in this case are for the, the installation of a hard car unloader and for and, and eventually in another phase of the development, the commodity barn. Those both those items were specifically identified in the settlement agreement to be done. So, so this is uh, the applicant's, I guess, best effort to, to comply with those conditions in the settlement. So just to know that that's the project. The project isn't talking about the rails, isn't talking about uh, the other. The, the other requirement, and we did as a, um, at the request of the, the applicant, the, the master site plan for the Port of Ivory. This is an existing facility. As, as such, there was no county requirement for any, any work to be done as far as the master site plan for this. So what we did, and that's why it's not considered a project, but we have it identified and identified what the existing conditions are out there. Those businesses have been established for many, many years. They're an ongoing um, uh, interest. And what we've done is we've identified locations of buildings. We've identified some basic operational statements for those companies. We haven't gone any farther than that because really there is no need on the county ordinance to do that because there's no project, no proposal. There's no uh, nothing for the master site plan of the whole facility. Uh, as far as the final site plan for the Richard Best, that is the project, and what triggered that for our county regulations is the building permit issue. Um, I know that the, um, we talked about the section 16.2 was brought up by uh, their consultant. Well, all of, those, all of those entities that are identified as far as allowing planning, public works, building, uh, the health department, the fire office, they're all consulted on this matter. And if, if, if the fire department is satisfied with, with the existing conditions out there, there's, there's nothing that we're going to force another agency to, to, to do more. They're satisfied with, with what the existing conditions are. Uh, I do believe that the fire hydrants are identified in, in the site plan, just to clarify that. Um, then uh, as far as uh, the crossing, a lot of the discussion has been to the crossing, which really isn't part of this project. If you were to deny this project 
uh, the final site plan today, the operations would continue going forward as they have in, in the past. This is not part of that. So the, the impact of the road, road crossing, while everybody is concerned with that, and, and, the, and we've taken many steps to deal with the railroad company to try to see what can be accommodated, and, and the county is, is open to uh, being supportive of, of any type of quiet zone or, or anything that could be maybe done in the future. We actually had our engineering staff, uh, one proposal was talking about an overpass. Again, we, and that's included in your pack of the design and, and the cost estimate is just for, for the amount of traffic there, the, the, the warrants don't, don't meet for that type of, a, a, of expense. I believe it was over $10 million. It would have been taking some of the neighbor's property. Some of the houses would have had to been taken as part of that overpass, so that's not really solving the problem either. Um, and then as far as the, the sound goes, the, these are safety issues that, that, the, the, that are federal regulations around, uh, as far as the horn crossings and the, and the bells with the, with the crossing that are not in the control of the county whatsoever, not part of this project, and they're exempt by statute from CEQA for the safety, the safety, the blowing of the horns is a safety, uh, is a safety matter that's required and it's exempt from CEQA. Uh, the other, the other factor as far as the volume of this, I, I think sometimes there have been some consideration that, oh, the, the, the project's going to expand. Well, the project is we pre, uh, a volume condition on this of 550,000 tons annually. This is for the permit that, that the applicant went through with the Air District. They did their own CEQA analysis, determined that it was category exempt because the zoning is proper for this type of uh, a business. And so they're capped at what, what was 550,000 ton, which is almost what they approached in 2015. Now, subsequent to that, as everybody knows, the dairy industry and the majority of this goes for feed up and down. So thus far, this year is significantly less. But it's capped at that 550. So it will, it will not exceed what we saw in 2015. So we're at the cap as far as that goes. Uh, as far as... Um, the bias, I don't believe that there's bias here at all. As far as the staff's uh, reporting, we used outside consultants for the traffic study and for, for the noise, uh, which is what we do in any case. We're the, we're, we're the um, responsible agency on this, so it's, it's up to us to make a professional and, and, uh, a recommendation to your commission. Uh, we often will have, and, and, and as Aaron had mentioned, the the operational statement in the site plan is much more thorough than probably seen on most. You'll, you'll, you'll say, well, we're going to have this many employees and we're going to work from this time to that time and that's about it. We have over 55 conditions that have been placed on this, uh, on this resolution that they're going to have to adhere to. We've, we've limitations of hours for unloading and, and, uh, uh, with the, with the um, uh, workers. We have limitations on, on, on some of the equipment that they have on their on-site equipment to reduce sound. The, the commodity uh, barn and the hard car unloader are part of the settlement agreement to help reduce the sound and dust. And so, they're, so these, the, the conditions out there currently will improve once these measures have been in, built and installed. So um, I, think, I think that that is... Basically, um, oh, as far as the time, I, I, everybody's had, I, I believe, everybody's had plenty of time uh, to review the, these, uh, this information. The, the documents, yes, there's 900 pages. Majority of that is information that's been submitted to us months or a year ago. Uh, and, and what is new is, is being to, able to organize it in a way, in a manner that I think that the commission can review better, the comments in one book, response to comments, so you can go back and forth very easily to, to see what the staff's comments, uh, response to the comments are. So this is just the compiling in an organized manner, but this isn't all new information. This is what's occurred over the, the course of, uh, of this project. So with that, I would, I would recommend that your board, or your uh, commission, uh, deliberate on this matter and, and, and make a decision. Thank you. I'm not sure are there any other comments that need to be made at this time. I'm going to close the public testimony. Thank you very much. Are there any anything you know, else our commission wants comment. to say? Uh, in 17 years, I've voted for staff's recommendations. I have voted against them. <clears throat> I think our staff is very fair. They're just there to review what the laws are in respect to our. Uh, county 
rules and regulations, and uh, I don't uh, I don't see that as a conflict. Uh, that's just part of your job. That's and so uh, I, I have I don't see that at all. So. Yeah, I would share that. Um, I think staff's done a, done an excellent job. Um, they're not representing anyone uh, in any business. Uh, uh, you outsource and you, you, you get expertise from various sources. Uh, they don't have that expertise. They outsource to solve the problem that uh, meets the criteria for the general plan. And that's what we're here. We're, we're here to rule on land use for the, for the population, for the public. Uh, we, we don't take sides. And I take exception to comments to that effect, uh, both for our, for our commission and, and our staff. So, um, Let's put that to bed. Uh, we're here to look at the facts as they've been accumulated by various agencies. And uh, that's the end of the discussion. Is that a motion, Lee? Oh, wait, well, I'll, I'll have... make a motion that we approve. We have a couple other comments. Yes, okay. I still have. I, I would just like to make a comment um, that I think dur during this process, um, <laughs> We have all been very sympathetic to the concerns of the neighbors, also to the Dinuba Citizens for Responsible Planning. Um, we were challenged about reading all of this information. If you listen to the years that we've been looking at this, we have overly looked at the information in these books and then given to us again, which we appreciate so much, our staff, keeping us up to date and, and giving us a profile of, the, of all the information on both sides. It was a huge help to me. Um, but yes, the challenge about reading it, we have read it. And um, I think there's just a time that we all need to move on and either decline or go on with them. And just to let you know, I will remind you, uh, Mr. Whitletch always does this, but I'll take his job this time, that all commission actions on any of the above matters may be appealed to the Board of Supervisors, and any appeal must be filed in writing with the Board of Supervisors within 10 days, and an appeal fee is required. John, do you have anything? Yeah, I wanted to, <clears throat> it seems like we've really mitigated the nuisance elements in this. And I have a question for Hector because I regard him as an expert in this field. Are there any potentially significant environmental impacts in this? I don't foresee any. Uh, again, the foundation of the analysis began as a response <coughs> to the settlement. And I think everything that could potentially occur as a result of this project has been identified and discussed and analyzed, and especially you know, the outside consultants for the noise and the traffic. I mean, that, that's their expertise. Uh, we had no say regarding the rail crossing and the bells going off. That was an entirely different matter outside of our purview. And CEQA, it was exempt from CEQA. So I, I can't think of any other type of issue that would come up, Commissioner. Thank you so much. Now. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. There's two motions here to approve um, for the uh, final site plan number PSR 14-005, uh, approve the Port of Ivory Industrial Park Master Site Plan. That's I'll second one. that motion. Gong? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Yes. Miliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Second motion is to approve uh, an addendum to an adopted negative declaration for zone change number PZ07-010, consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulations, Sections 15162, 15164, and conditionally approve final site plan number PSR 14-005 to expand an existing freight forwarding terminal. And we have the vote? Oh, I'm sorry, we need a second. I'll second that. Now may we have the vote. Gong? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Yes? Yes. 
Whitlatch? Yes. Piliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Madam Chair, can I make a comment like always? Yes, now you may, can make a comment. Okay. Uh, I'm also a member of TCAG, and uh, those who are opposed and those who are for uh, should uh, go to TCAG because uh, there's, I think it's seven incorporated cities, the county, the railroad, San Joaquin Rail, Caltrans, I don't know, I might be missing somebody, but uh, uh, they're the ones that direct money for roads and problems like this. And in this report, there's the beginnings of a plan that shows an overpass. And uh, you can check with our staff, they'll tell you how to get a hold of TCAG, but TCAG is a powerful organization in Tulare County and can be quite helpful to your, your cause. Thank you for that comment. That, thank you. Any others? Just a thank you to the commission and staff and applicant. Uh, we're still working on it. Thank you. Very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, director's report. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as we speak, uh, there's a ribbon cutting going on at Deer Creek Bridge down south of uh, Porterville. That, that grand opening of the bridge is today. Uh, a successful uh, completion of that. Our bridge program in public works is very extensive. As you know, we have over 300 bridges, I think, in the county. And, uh, and we're going through. Uh, the previous one was the Oliver Bridge over the Kings River. Uh, a year or so ago, and now we've got this one, so we're moving forward on that front. Uh, McDonald's down in Early Mart opened a, a week and a half ago or so. I think there's actually a piece in the paper today, the Times Delta today about it. Um, it was very uh, successful. The, the community has really embraced it. One of, the, one of the unique things, and I don't know, maybe I mentioned this to you last time leading up to it, is that, that during the construction phase, Residents were actually coming up to the construction workers and, and giving them fruit and drinks and things because they were so they were so uh, happy and uh, that they were building this project. So that's that's opened up. We're um, we're talking with a number of other uh, projects that we can't identify yet. They're still confidential, but but with some uh, expansions of some of our ag uh, businesses in the county. There, we're looking at that, and there's that. Actually, one thing I can say today is that we're um, at Foster Farms up in Traver. They're pouring the foundations for their new silo for a um, organic feed mill for a uh, chicken feed mill. Uh, they're pouring the foundation. It's it's big time. It's like I I, I called it Hoover's Hoover Dam style. <laughs> the thing is, the the slab is 60 inches deep thick. And it's a 70 by 70 slabs with the rebarb. There are the, the, the diameter of the rebarb is a, an inch and three quarters. This thing looks like a jail cell that, that, <laughs> that, that uh, was there. So they're pouring. Uh, they started. I, I don't know if they're completed yet, but they were pouring um, a, a, a constant pour of uh, 118 cement trucks that were just going to come in, pour, and go on. It was a, it was anticipated to be about a, a 14 to, to 18 hour pour. And the reason they're getting that in now is because it takes a month and a half for it to cure before they can start putting the, the other foundation, the steel work on top of it. So uh, that's going on as we speak as well. That's a almost a $16 million project. Uh, there's other things in the works up there at, at the Foster Farms facility as well that hopefully we'll, we'll be able to share later this year. Uh, so there's a number of, uh, of activity going on. Uh, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, our building permits We've surpla we surpassed last year's building permits. At the end of April, we had issued 3,939 permits, which topped, exceeded last year's by, I don't know, 50 or 60 permits. We still have two more months to go in the fiscal year. So we're, we're looking at breaking uh, a record since back in, in 2005, 2006, I think, is the time that we had done close to 5,000 permits. So we're approaching, we're approaching that. We might, even, we might even beat the top uh, ever. Potentially, it depends how it goes. A lot of the projects are solar related for uh, rooftop solar and, and all that. About 20%, 25% almost uh, of all of our building permits are associated somehow with solar, whether it's single family residence or, or others. Uh, the, the large solar projects are underway and, and, and nearing, 
nearing completion, I suppose, uh, down there in the in the South Valley, down south of Ducor, connected up to the Vestal projects, or to the Vestal substation. So there's a lot of activity going on right now. Thank you. Uh, just real quickly, uh, Hector and I attended a scoping meeting in Three Rivers the other night for their community plan, and I'll let Hector talk more about that. But just on an overall community planning front, uh, we're going to go forward again next year with quite a few community plans. So we're still working on Early Mart and Three Rivers. Those are, <clears throat> those are our main focus, but we'll also probably start working on Poplar and uh, Ivanhoe as well. So... Uh, Next year, like we did last year, there'll be a, a full complement of uh, plans in front of you. Um, and we are also continuing to work on complete streets. Uh, that process is still going forward, and we look forward to next year uh, receiving funding from TCAG for that as well. But I'll turn it over to Hector to talk about the scoping meeting in Three Rivers. Hector Guerra, environmental planner. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Thunder Steeler. Uh, we did. We had a... a, a Scoping meeting in Three Rivers on Monday. Commissioner Elliott actually attended also. Not a big turnout, but we got, I guess, a steady, uh, the steady group that typically will show up. And all I basically did was introduce how the scoping meeting and the notice of preparation process works. There wasn't a real lengthy discussion on it because at scoping meetings, typically what you do is like they tell you, please look at that, look at traffic, look at water, look at, you know, biological and, and, I don't have answers typically at these meetings. I will just say that's being studied, uh, that's going to be analyzed. Thank you for your comment. That's all I can typically do. Uh, we'll probably put some clarifications if we're asked a question. We can get timelines, that kind of stuff. But the community did a really good job, and, and, and we are addressing many of the concerns. I, 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 it was neat. Typically, scoping meetings don't involve communities. You know, we typically will have one that involves agencies who say, Caltrans say, well, you know, it's a mountainous road and we really can't widen it anymore or something or Cal Fish and Wildlife will tell us about riparian habitats and the river and those kind of things so it's that uh, but that the community attended and participated kudos to them they're on top of it and uh, they're going to be uh, thoroughly informed because those who attend will automatically receive our notice of availability when the EIR is finally done so that was it and and uh, thank you for your nice compliment Commissioner Elliott regarding uh, the CEQA, we, we do our best to be as objective because even if you have an adverse effect on CEQA, that doesn't necessarily kill a project. You know, if it goes to a level of the next document type, like an EIR, for example, statement of overriding considerations, we do what we can to, to address all the concerns. Uh, I'm not looking at a, a good or a bad. I'm looking at addressing CEQA, so I remain as neutral as I can. Well, we can remember, I, I'm sure all of us can, when we didn't have someone in your position and... We appreciate your perspective. Oh, yeah. uh, if, I, if I may, I'd just like to update one other item uh, of, of general, um, just for, for, your, for your information. Um, as we uh, had approved the Lions Club uh, up in Three Rivers special use permit for allowing uh, use at the rodeo grounds, there's been a number of events that have, have happened up there subsequent to that. The, the, the Jazz Fest, Jazz Fest went off to... to, to no, no issues, no complaints, no, no, anything on that. The rodeo, the rodeo. The first night, we had one neighbor say it was a little, it was loud. Um, they made contact with the Lions Club with with uh, contact there, and and they they got it turned down. And the rest of the weekend, apparently, there's no issues with that. This last past weekend, we had the the Earth Jam up there, which which everybody going into think this would be the biggest challenge of, of all of the events that they have scheduled you know currently uh, there was some concerns about noise as well um, on the first night and um, it it took a while and they and then they got it down to the right level and then um, we had uh, one of our staff up there throughout the day on I think Friday evening and then sat most of Saturday taking readings monitoring uh, and then the <clears throat> Lions Club also had readings uh, and then we went to, to some of the neighbors that were concerned. And, and the readings, while staff was present, didn't exceed the threshold. Uh, but there were times on site that, the, the, that it peaked up a little bit high. Uh, they were able to make some adjustments and get it back down. So, I, and, and as far as shutoff time, some of the, compl the complaints in the past have been that it runs on until midnight or beyond. Well, I can say that, that, that the shutoff has been 
right on time across the board. In fact, one time that was shut down a few minutes early even. So the shutting off, I think, is, is settled. I think the, 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 what we need to do is work a little bit more on the monitoring because it seems like the solution can be there because after some tweaking, it gets to level and it seems good, and then maybe a few hours later, a different band is on or something, something gets out, and then, and then it's spiked up a little bit, so then we have to make it. So I think the, the key is to work with the Lions Club for, uh, on the monitoring issue. We're going to meet with them um, shortly and discuss some options. We're going to look at potentially what type of uh, equipment that we could install that would maybe have like a a signal light, like a, 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 a like almost like a traffic signal, a green, yellow, red, that could be up by the key, the the master board uh, monitor, and have these monitors that out, out uh, wireless reading it, and then they know when it starts getting yellow that it's uh, preaching, and red they know they got to turn the, the thing down. So we're looking at options like that that could be affordable but yet functional. So uh, just know that we're we're working on that. I haven't heard other than. We, we talked to the sheriff. The sheriff said that the, the, the event this last week was, was significantly smoother and better run than the previous year's event for the Earth Jam. Um, so I know we have one commissioner that has personal knowledge, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, they, I live two and a half miles from the stage, and I'm up a little bit in the canyon. And of course, the canyon walls reflect everything and bounces off. This is the first year I haven't actually been able to hear the announcer exactly what they're saying. So I know they've done some stuff to mitigate that situation. You still get the music and you can feel the bass sometime and the drumming, but that, I mean, there's a lot of people in Three Rivers that think that's an amenity. So, I mean, it is what it is, but they've actually done a really good job in toning it down a bit. You've heard, Wayne and I, that there's been some incidents at the, on the Kings River at Froggies. Yeah. Is that true? That Recently? Recently? I haven't heard of any. That, that, that is be. true because I received um, press releases on on assaults and criminal activity there. No, that's that's new. That's new. Are we still monitoring that property? That permit? I I. I, I believe so, but I, I don't know because, it, again, it's been off the radar for, for quite a while since I've taken uh, the position I'm at. So I, I haven't heard of anything, so I'll, I'll check into that. I'll talk to code. May, uh, it was probably if it was some incident. It was probably reported to the sheriff's department. So I haven't. I'm not personally. This is the first time learning of it. Well, that, um, that uh, watch commander and supervisor that reported to us, <clears throat> I noticed that guy retired. So maybe that the new patrol supervisor in that area doesn't know that we're interested in that property. So it might be good to check with them. Okay. Just a quick comment on RBT. I didn't hear any testimony on it, and I wasn't going to bring anything up at the time, but was there any discussion about RBT just buying the property from the owners that are offended? Uh, not that I'm uh, aware of. Um, uh, who knows what's been offered out there right. through, the, through time. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to stir up a can of worms here, so I just am saying. Well, I'm sure that's been one of the considerations. That would be cheaper than an really? overpass. Yes, overpass. it would be. So that would have, so, you know, that's right. I mean, it would have been cheaper than if it's going to get challenged and he's going to go to court on this thing, that's for sure. But anyway. And if, you, if the, the design, the preliminary design, when we had engineering draw the uh, creating an overpass, Actually, part of the design would have to be taking a couple of those houses anyway, <laughs> because of the the, just the engineering factor. Mr. Wadiski, you know, he always gives his addresses there, but he lives in Los Angeles. Oh, he doesn't. Wait uh, a minute. He just said back and forth. He's he's back and forth. He lives he he lives down there. But he really lives. And there. he's up here and there and back. Oh, and this is a vacation home. <laughs> yeah, we haven't closed the meeting. Home. I know. I don't. I mean, I'm saying it for the record. He oh. he really lives in L.A. So. Oh, he uses his physical address as that address. Okay, if we have no other comments. Craig Anderson, nothing today? Oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going... No, no, one question. Oh. May we leave these for recycle? Yes, yes sir. You know what? We're going to recycle them, and we'll use them at the board for the board appeal. Yeah, How about right. that? <laughs> there you and, go. We don't have to reprint and them And I again. was going to mention, I hope <laughs> Velma's not the one that has to carry all these out to the car. <laughs> These today. are really nice binders, by the way. Those are nice binders. Okay, if no other comments or we leave them here? considerations. Yeah, just leave them, just leave them on the counter. I'm going to adjourn the meeting of the Tulare County Planning Commission and reconvene on May 25th, 2016.